Last time, we were looking at the continuous random variable and our probability density functions. This time, we're moving that onto our cumulative distribution function. Okay, so previously, uh, we would have seen a probability density function looking something like this. Um, and we may have wanted to find out the probability of uh, getting, for example, uh, a temperature between minus 2 degrees and 1 degrees, say, for snow or something. Um, and to find, this that, to find this out, we would have to integrate between minus 1 and minus 2 um, using our function. Now, we're going to consider in particular, what if we wanted, for example, any temperature below one degree? So anything from that point downwards. Now here, you'd have to integrate between one and negative infinity to find all the area below that point. Okay. Um, now we have a cumulative notation for this. So if I wrote down that, what that means is, is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. So if I wrote, for example, f minus 1, that means less than or equal to negative 1. If I wrote f Zero, it means the chance that a x is less than or equal to zero. Now, if we're doing lots of these, having to integrate this every single time is a small pain. So rather than doing that, uh, we'd need to, we tend to create our cumulative distribution function. And this is these functions here. So the integration of our PDF. Uh, and this is very much like our work with the binomial and Poisson in our discrete functions. So let's take this function again, the same looking function. Now our cumulative distribution function, I'm going to plot on this graph down there. Now if you imagine this, um, that the cumulative function will be well, nothing to this point, then it's the summation of all the bits of area under this graph. So start by finding out the chance of that value. Then you'd add on this value here, and then this value there, and then you'd add on this value. Then it starts to slow, as these get smaller, you're gonna to start to slow down in the rate of increase. And then past this side, as you add on these bits, adding on more and more each time. So that's going to get larger again. And it's going to stop at that point there once everything's been included. So this graph here is all these bits of area added together, getting bigger. Now, if you can guess where this stops, the maximum point of this, that's right, it's a 1. Uh, because that is, of course, the maximum probability. What's the chance of something happening? It can't be more than 100%. Once you reach one, it is guaranteed. We're done. That's it. Finished. Um, at this point, our graph will then go totally horizontal. Because all these points here are adding absolutely nothing. They've got no stuff to add on. That's a terrible use of the word stuff. Uh, nothing else here to add on to this going forwards. So we reach a maximum of one and it kind of goes horizontal at that point straight across like that. Okay, um, so to get from this graph to this graph, to get from our PDF to our CDF, we have to integrate our function. To get back again, well, as you know from your previous units, opposite of integration is to
to differentiate to go back from our CDF to our PDF. And the later videos will look at, okay, how do I actually do this process of integrating? Uh, there's a few tricks to it that make it, make it a bit different. Uh, just for this video, um, we need to know we start with our PDF function and we integrate it to get to our cumulative function. Now there's a few properties involved in our cumulative distribution function. The first one being that it will always rise to the maximum value of 1. So it always goes to 1 and no further. The other thing is we can't have gaps in this line, it can't jump around. It must be one continuous line. So it must be one single line. Now this line must always be going upwards because as we go along we're always adding in extra probabilities. So it might go up, horizontal, up, horizontal, up, horizontal, but it is never ever going to start dropping at any point. Because that means as you're going up, it's getting less likely, which makes no sense. Um, so our line is always rising or horizontal. Then lastly, is that our cumulative function would always take a value between 0 and 1. Either we're down this end, in which case, if that's a negative 4, the chance of anything less than negative 4 is going to be 0, or we've reached the maximum, let's say that's 10 by this point, or beyond the maximum, and then the chance of anything less than to 10 is going to be 1. So you're either going to be at 0, 1, or something in between, but never, never anything else. Uh, let's quickly look at how we might work out some probabilities. Okay, so for this function, if I want the chance I get x is less than or equal to 0 0.5, also written as, not like that, I meant to write this, so the function of 0 0.5 is going to be integration, so our values start at zero. So we're going to integrate first everything below that point. So minus infinity to zero, which has no value at all. And we need to add to that the area between zero and 0 0.5, because we want the cumulative up to that point. And at this range, we're using this particular part of the function. Now if we integrate that, you'll get absolutely nothing, plus x cubed, and we're going between 0 and 0 0.5. And if you work all that out, you'll find that your cumulative function up to 0 0.5 is 0 0.125, or the probability of x is less than or equal to 0 0.5 is also 0 0.125 because it means the same thing. Right, in the next video, or the next two videos, we'll look further into how to actually construct our cumulative distribution function.